hoping a couple more numbers pop in. It is time. We'll just go ahead and get started. Um, good afternoon now, everybody. Uh, this is a work session of the Anchorage Assembly. We are here uh, today is November 1st, 2024. We're here to take up AM 857-2024, which is um, Executive Appointment Confirmation Hearing, Susie Marshall, Information Technology Director. Um, we are in a Teams environment, so uh, members, if you want to get in the queue, you text me or put a note in the chat there. Please note, though, that the chat is not a part of the public um, conversation. It's open meetings, so we ask that you make sure you ask all of your questions um, on the record and not in the chat. And otherwise, uh, Madam Clerk, would you please call out the roll? Yes, uh, members present right now are Chair Constant, Assemblymember Littlefield, Assemblymember Myers, Assemblymember Brawley, and Assemblymember Rivera. Right, and we'll let folks know if others join us. So um, again, we're here today to take up the confirmation hearing of Susan Marshall, again, as the IT director for the municipality. And our traditional process is we let the administration present the candidate and then the candidate to make comments for themselves. So Mr. Falls, you have the floor. All right, well, thank you, Mr. Chair. It is again today my great pleasure to reintroduce the assembly to Susie Humphrey Marshall, Susan, uh, as she is officially known. Um, she has previously served as the director of the Office of Information Technology for the municipality, and we were quite delighted that she agreed to come back for a second stint. Um, for those who have reviewed her resume, you'll see that Susie has a varied background where she has served as CFO, CEO, and a number of different organizations. Uh, and I will say that my experience working with Susie in my last go round was that Susie brought a very healthy and incredibly welcome customer service focus to the IT department. Uh, there are times when the central services of the municipality can become departments of no. There are other times when there is a breakthrough and they become departments of how do we get to yes. And Susie was definitely in the latter mode, which I could say was very well received by the frontline directors. Um, in this go round where the mayor of France is pleased to put her forward again as a nominee to head OIT. Um, there, I think, are, are an excitement to return to, to to continue in that vein at OIT. I think it has been operating in that vein for the last few years. Um, but also uh, a particularly attractive opportunity, which is that Susie, with her financial background, is also um, acutely aware of the effect that our SAP system and potential future upgrades to that SAP system will have on the financial operations of the municipality and has a very close and good working relationship with our nominee for CFO, Philippe Bryce. And so I am personally very relieved to know that we will have a very strong axis across those two columns if the assembly sees fit to confirm those nominees. And with that, I will turn it over to Susie Humphrey Marshall. Hello. I am Susie Humphrey Marshall. I'm also uh, Susan Marshall. Susan's my official name. Uh, Susie is my nickname. Uh, I'm thrilled to be appointed as the director of IT for the Municipality of Anchorage, and I look forward to earning your confirmation. Uh, from my perspective, excuse me, technology should not get in the way of getting work done. The people of Anchorage deserve a high-functioning government workforce, a well-oiled machine. And I think, excuse me. I'll get through this. Um, I think the IT department has the oil for the machine. So IT department workforce is solid and there's a lot going on in our shop right now. A few examples of some current IT uh, department efforts. Um, uh, security video camera network build out. Um, upgrading SAP, and um, this is a commitment to make sure we keep technology tuned up. Uh, desktop upgrade to Windows 11, cell phone upgrades, uh, video conference technology updates, uh, network stabilization, um, cybersecurity training. Um, there's also some standard services that are not always associated with the IT department that I just kind of want to 
bring to light again. There's reprographics where that's like bulk and specialized printing services. We also do, um, so for example, example, <clears throat> excuse me, your budget book, that came from repro. Um, mail delivery and pickup, we also, um, we do inner office and then USPS mail. And then we also house a records management department. And that's for FOIA requests and um, trying to build out the records management information systems. So we touch every organization, including, including the assembly. Um, we got you. It All right. So um, thank you, Susie. Um, I have two kind of lines of questions. Um, one. Here, Constant. Can we say for the record that Karen Bronga and Daniel Volland joined at about 2.23? Sure. Um, it's noted. Thank you. Um, I didn't see anyone in the queue, so I'm just jumping in. So, um, okay. So one is, in my term on the assembly, probably one of the most significant projects I ever worked on was with you. And it has paid dividends for years and is a very, very, very valuable asset. And that is the public portal for assembly records, which is the system that we created to upload and serve to the public every assembly record all the way back to the Charter Commission and every ordinance resolution uh, memorandum, information memorandum, emergency ordinance, all of it. And um, it wasn't easy. It was a lot of work and it was a challenging conversation to have happen, but it was it has just paid dividends. We also generated what has come to be called the um, online checkbook or the open checkbook, depending on how you talk about it. And ultimately, it's this theory of an open government portal and beyond the checkbook. Um, I don't think that the the checkbook, if you will, has met its promise. And I think that it's because it's like phase one of a many, many phase project. And so um, I know a lot of the Muni is currently in the phase of kind of damage control and repair. And so it's not so easy to be thinking over the horizon for where are we going in kind of visionary work. But I want to ask the question, where are we going in the context of visionary work? And I have some ideas, but I'd love to hear yours. Hmm. Um, visionary work. So definitely we want to make sure we have um, the tools, uh, the data available to the public. That is definite. Um, Def definitely high on the list. Um, how we get there is really a combination of looking at the technology that we have and then, you know, what, like if open checkbook isn't meeting the mark, then let's evaluate it and figure out how we can get that data out. Happy to do so and love to put it at the top of the list. Um, the other things, uh, some other things I have been um, kind of like seeing uh, since I came back is uh, we have to make sure that our network is supporting everybody. We've we've had um, sounds like some challenges in the last couple of years. And um, I'm not exactly I've, I've been kind of investigating that. Like, is it relationship based or, you know, like, is it us and the vendor or is it just that requirements aren't matching? Um, or are we just not sitting down as a team to say, what does a customer want? Because that that's that's what I do. I have this um like I should show it. Anyway, a little uh thing in my office. Every time we're in a meeting, I always make sure that it's a, it says the customer, it's like a nameplate. And and the, the conversation should always, in my perspective, is that we're a service organization. And it, just because there's some cool, fancy, shiny, techie object might not mean anything if nobody, if it doesn't help. The conversation and help the workforce or even help share information with the public so um i definitely am looking forward to getting back into that space and and trying to understand and and do what i can to help and um and kind of i i do think that what i what i noticed maybe what happened over the last well anyway what happened recently um is that there might have i think there have been silos kind of put up within it department and also IT and other departments. So I really want to make sure I get in and have those conversations again and try to make sure that we are um, delivering and um, 
supporting the team. So I don't, Chris, I don't have any real specific things. I Well, I guess the, we are talking about the website again. <laughs> and um, that is a, a goal. Um, and it sounds like the mayor's office wants to really participate. Uh, I mean, I, I don't want to speak out of turn. I should probably, shouldn't have said that, but it sounds like that there's uh, interest and in, um, in really trying to make it more of a modern uh, access to our information. So, um, and I'm, you know, once again, That's super good. happy to hear that you liked what you got before. With oh, it's proved profoundly portal. transformative for people all over. Um, okay, and I'll put a fine point and then yield the floor to the next sure. question. So um, the the online checkbook project was painful and resource constraints being what they are and staff and all the pain that was happening at the time, it was difficult. And what we ended up with was a system that served data out of SAP, right? So it's simple reports generated by um, the system. And so, and that's fine. Um, what isn't available at this time, which I, and this is the mind bending part where smart IT people look at it and go, hmm, how am I gonna solve that crazy puzzle is, I would like to begin the work to find a way to go from you're just getting the SAP record to you're able to get the contract itself, a copy, a PDF version of it that you're looking at that record so that you can independently have the public record that it's going to take somebody two days to get back to you to say, I can get this to you in 10 days. It's going to take them two minutes to send it to you in an email, but they still wait 10 days or longer to give it to you when you should just have it. And so um, you can mm -hmm. imagine a mind bending okay. function that would have to be created to go from uh, contracts in one silo of the Muni to uh, a data portal. And so that's one example of how okay. I would like us to be thinking creatively about serving the public the records that they own. And we, if we can get ourselves out of the way, it would be a better government. Okay, so thank you. Next in the oh, queue, I have okay. Ms. Brawley and then Ms. Bronco. So Karen, oh, excuse me, Anna. Yeah, um, hi, Susie. I'm glad hi. to be uh, hopefully working with you soon. Um, and I appreciated uh, that you mentioned all the different functions IT has. I didn't realize Reprographics was in your office, but that makes sense. Um, so my question is, um, I know there's been a lot of internal improvements uh, moving to remote work, um, hybrid meetings, uh, you know, using teams like we are today because of weather. Um, and I know those are uh, kind of internal facing to the organization. Um, and then Mr. Constant mentioned the more public facing, um, you know, the document portal, which is a really great um, uh, tool. And then, of course, the online checkbook. So I'm just wondering also, uh, you know, I'm always interested in public engagement or public accessibility. Um, and so I think along those similar lines, just wondering if you have thoughts about um, not just kind of the internal improvement work within the, the Muni as an employer and as an organization, but um, if you have other thoughts about how we can uh, be better using technology or better using, um, basically, how, how can we be more uh, proactively outreaching to the public or helping them have visibility into the city. Thanks. Um, you know, I I have not had a lot of headspace. I have not put a lot of thought into that, but that doesn't mean um, that, I mean, it's, let's hear what your ideas are. I think that originally, like when, when um, 2020, so COVID hit, there was this big thing about like, how do we communicate? with the public online and how do we have a presence, but do it in uh, being very sensitive to cybersecurity and making sure we weren't vulnerable. And then that was like a, a do we use Zoom? Do we use Teams? I mean, there was like technology choices and then there was um, a lot of debate about that and what we could broadcast or what we couldn't. Um, I, I I don't I don't really have any like extra special ideas. I do know that people are really sensitive about um, I you know um, AI right now, and I think we need to probably be sensitive about what we're doing and how we do it and what we share. Um, you know what we we don't want to have a anyway. I think we're really careful about AI, and we make sure that that we double check how we use it and how we. Um, if we use it in communication with the public, you know, like if if there is a chat bot or is if there is a um, something like that, that we make sure that we are uh, 
being extremely sensitive um, to the data and that we don't just try to aggregate data that we that is um, PII or CGIS. I mean, we have a lot of security stuff that we have to constantly um, be aware of for any kind of application service. So I don't know if that answers your question, but I'm really um, mostly want you to know you got some ideas, send them my way. I'm really um, would love to hear them um, and see what we can help improve. Yeah, thanks. And and I'll, I won't bring up ideas now, but um, I appreciate that. And also you bringing up one that there's a lot of internal work that you need to do, right? And just make sure things are functioning. And then, yeah, the kind of note of caution when we have an idea, how do we manage that? So, um, yeah, so thank you. You bet. All right, thank you, uh, Ms. Brogan. Thanks. I, I had to laugh because I was the I was chairing the famous um, community council meeting that got uh, Zoom bombed. <laughs> and right. so I was so new to Zoom, I didn't know what to do, but it was uh, it was something. Anyway, um, <laughs> one of the things that I I hear from a lot of my constituents is that the um, assembly meeting is not easy for them to follow. And um, I, I keep thinking that a split screen type thing where um, we could be marking, you know, if we decide we're going to we're going to change the order of the day, that somehow that could be done on a screen that things are actually moving. So people that walk in and haven't heard we've changed the order can kind of follow where we are but having one screen that this is this is where we are on the full agenda mm -hmm. and um i don't know if there's a way to make that happen um and this is probably impossible but um it'd be nice that if you if you couldn't come to the meeting and quite frankly they are they are marathons and if you have small children and they need to get to bed um, it would be nice to be able to have someone virtually like a Teams type ability to testify where we can see them. It's it's a lot more powerful than the phone. And um, I don't know if that's anything that could be accomplished, but those are things that I'm thinking of. And I am I am so appreciative of IT at the municipality. It's there, you know, when I have problems, very responsive and um, it, it it makes a world of difference. So I do think thank the IT group immensely. Thank you for those words. They're a good crew. They really do want to help. Um, and I will, um, I can't remember what the answer was on the teams for the public, um, like the reason not to do that. I, I will research that though. Thank you. Yeah, I think that um, I'll just jump in there Many of those discussions are internal to the assembly branch, and we'd love to have you inside for some of those conversations. So, okay, love to help. Yeah. Uh, anyone else with questions? Okay, I don't see any more questions. You know, um, Susie, I I don't want to dig too deeply into the deep dark past, um, but we did have a circumstance that arose that you and I've talked about a bit with the previous director of IT that um, raised any number of security concerns relating to how information is accessed by the administration that is in the that's owned by the assembly and um, I would love to hear a little bit about your theory on information security and um, you know whose whose records are they anyways so <laughs> um, and you're thinking about I just want to clarify like just in general about the records. Um, well, yeah, it can be Are you specific. thinking more like your assembly records and who's got there, there access was, to that? Yeah, that there was a moment okay. when it became pretty apparent that um, our emails were being accessed by members of the administration. It also right. became apparent that um, security cameras were monitoring the actions of the assembly by the administration through effectively IT systems. And so uh, there was a time when a fake policy was uploaded into um, the Muni policy world, especially the back end IT policies or what I'm not exactly sure the label of practices that was then purported to be an actual policy and was used to create the perception that our elections were tainted. 
And so over the last three years, I'm, again, I'm in a new, new deal. We have great administration, people we can trust. But systems are also a key part of that. Like trust is based on a system that protects you. Um, that's really the question. Like, how does this, how, how should we be thinking about this in the context of you and your leadership of the department in relationship to the past and not so much the future, but as a leadership of the branch, I have to pay attention to that kind of thing. Sure, sure. I think, um, well, one, I, I super um, support the separation of duty. Like we, just because you have IT, it's 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 a what what do we have we ha we definitely have a code of ethics for IT and what we do is we make people may, maybe what I'll do is make sure we revive that again and and so that people understand that just because you have access maybe that's what what happened is you forget because you can have access that you you access it and you shouldn't and we have very specific like guidelines in our code of ethics. For IT, and maybe I could I could share that with you, and then I'll also make sure that um, my team kind of circles back because a lot of times that's done when you're hired, so it probably is a good reminder. And I will make sure that our team does that and really um, uh, make sure that we have processes, approval processes um, for anybody trying to get access to things that they they don't have as a normal course of a job. Um, I would say like in general, my staff is usually way too busy to sit around and try to read somebody's emails, you know, like it's, it's their, they're probably just trying to keep up with their own, but that doesn't mean, I mean, I appreciate that probably if it, if it did happen, it, you'd have to be very intentional. And so I, I really, um, I, I will, figure out a way to make sure, and I'll share with you guys, I'll create some some processes to make sure that my team, and I'll reiterate it with the team, that, you know, um, if, if your manager is asking you to do something, um, you don't just do it if, if it breaches these code of ethics. And that's what that says, but I'll make sure it says it strong, and then I will make sure my team um, tunes in and, um, and we'll do like regular check-ins about it, if that makes you better the the video conferencing or the video cameras right now that's kind of a it's like an active project because there's a lot of requests for um new camera systems so what what has happened in the past is that these camera systems each department so everybody has their own budget and their own they can just buy you know they buy their stuff and so what they've done in the past is they have like we'll just go get a bid and then we'll go and implement a camera system and we'll just put it on the network and then it'll be over there. And then this department did it and this department did it. And there has been no, we usually, initially we didn't even know about it until it breaks, right? And then they go, hey, IT. We're, we're like, what do, what do you have? <laughs> where is that? And where is So, you know, but, the one system like that, that I know I could show you some communications I've been shared it's the traffic camera system. There oh. is no great policy on who accesses that and how and how that information is shared. It's certainly a great area of information technology for the Muni because those cameras are all over the place and have some very interesting potential uses. So that's in the privacy genre outside of the government. But OK, thank you, Suze. I think you huh. answered sufficiently. Um, okay. And we can chat more about that stuff offline. Is there anyone else with questions that would like to pop in? And we were joined by Mr. Salt. Um, I don't know if he's still here, um, but uh, for the record, he joined us for a moment at least. Okay, Susie. Then I'm going to say thank you for time with these questions. We're here. We're oh, done. Just Mr. Chair. Early. Oh, sorry, I had go one ahead. Other quick question. Um, go ahead. Yeah, sorry. I thought of it uh, right before we were about to end. Um, and this is more maybe a question for follow up. So I had a meeting. It was a couple of years ago when I was on the Budget Advisory Commission with the previous director of IT and one item that he flagged um, that that doesn't need an answer now, but just was an interesting thing to think about was the shift in the uh, tech uh, sector to 
uh, license-based uh, software as opposed to buying software because it has budget implications. Um, and so, so I'm just mentioning that not not for a detailed answer now, but just to think about kind of, um, you know, beyond year over year, what what kind of budget implications we have for technology because we know our GIS license cost has gone up, and we, there's been multiple things that we've approved to. Um, to you know pay for that um and then also again paying for licenses means you're not you don't have the software right you just have the license to use it so um so again not looking for a detailed answer now but just wanted to note that um that's something on my mind as far as kind of what our tech needs are into the future and knowing that the in, the the industry itself is kind of changing the standard yeah i'll just quickly say yes it is a big deal um, and the biz, the model has changed as far as like how you pay. So it hits operating instead of capital. Um, but that's been that way probably for a good five years. Um, and so, yes, we are working through that with our budget, but I can share more details with you as a follow up. Thank you. Hmm? So, Susie, now I'm one last thing since we have <laughs> you here, we just received the communication today about it might as well let you use the last couple minutes to help folks kind of understand the memo relating to the s4 hana upgrade might as well kind uh, of put it in words for folks and sure of that, sure you know. sure yeah so original plan was to start working on that upgrade now um and what we are is because of a couple um reasons we have to delay it for a year and um, the reasons are, is that one, we were hoping to have the contract negotiations with our vendor that is helping us with the services side of it. Um, those contract negotiations are not complete yet. And I, um, I think there was, anyway, that's just not done yet um, for reasons you can't change, right? And then uh, the other one is that the SAP to actually technically cut over, there are some SAP limitations. And one and and the big one is that you can't have multiple. You can only have one fiscal year opened when you do the cutover. And so, for example, um, we did weren't exactly sure that we could hit that horizon exactly um, in the middle of the year next year. So we're we're hoping that we're going to be able to hit that both things. We'll have the vendor on board, and we'll be able to um, hopefully have. Um, enough team, the finance, new finance team will have enough time to only have one uh, fiscal year open um, in uh, 26, and then we can implement the upgrade then. I love your optimism. <laughs> Look, we're going to. I love your optimism it's, it's, uh, on behalf of the finance team. They're going to do it. I agree. <laughs> okay, so I think that's sufficient if there are no late late breaking questions. We're just a couple minutes before we're supposed to adjourn. Um, if you have any questions, I'm sure Susie will be willing to answer them for you. She also will be on the agenda Wednesday. And if nothing else, we will adjourn this work session and be back for a work session that starts at one. Thank you, Susie. Thank you all.